here, Anna. Jones! Let her go. Snakes. Hey everyone, my name is John from Let's Talk, and today we're here to talk about 1981's Raiders of the Lost Ark and its 4K Blu-ray. But before we dive into that, if you are a fan of movie reviews, 4K Blu-ray reviews, some game and tech reviews along the way, and we do podcasts, if you are a fan of all that, then this is the channel for you, and nothing helps this channel out more than by you simply liking this video and subscribing to the channel. So Raiders of the Lost Ark was directed by Steven Spielberg, it was released in June of 1981, it stars Harrison Ford, Karen Allen, John Reese davies amongst many other actors that appear in this film and Raiders of the Lost Ark is the first one in the Indiana Jones franchise we're getting our fifth and hopefully final one again bringing back Harrison Ford as the title character of Indiana Jones this very year so I thought it'd be a good time to dive into these 4k blu-rays also you guys voted for me to review these 4k blu-rays in place of the Christopher Nolan 4k blu-rays which we might do a little bit down the line. But before I dive into that 4K Blu-ray review, let's talk about Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark. So Raiders of the Lost Ark, like I said, was released in 1981. Steven Spielberg had just been coming off one of his only failures in 1941. And fortunately for him, he had a buddy named George Lucas who wanted to make a little movie called Indiana Smith. Steven Spielberg really had his eyes on making a James Bond movie, but George Lucas was able to twist his arm and he's like, hey, I got this idea. I want to bring those old-fashioned serials, modernize them, bring them to the big screen. I have this great idea. I wanted to make a Flash Gordon movie that didn't work out, so I just had to settle for making, you know, all just the Star Wars movies. But I have this idea. I can't direct it. Why don't you come in and do me this favor, direct it? Steven Spielberg, he needed a hit again. He wanted to prove to himself. He kind of lost his confidence with 1941, so he wanted to prove to himself, hey, he could still do it. He can make a movie that comes in under budget, a movie that has no trip-ups throughout the entire production. And I would say, he succeeded in that since Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark is now considered one of the greatest films ever made. It's in the National Library of Congress for being culturally significant. Indiana Jones is one of the most recognizable characters probably ever, if not the most recognizable character ever. The guy wearing the hat and the whip, you know, that stuff is all just iconic. You couldn't get a better actor than Harrison Ford back in the late 70s and early 80s. Harrison Ford was just on top of the world. Between Han Solo and Indiana Jones and then the next year, 1982, he'd play my personal favorite or one of my personal favorite Harrison Ford roles in Rick Deckard in Blade Runner. So at this time, you couldn't cast a better actor than... Harrison Ford to play the lead role and then you get Karen Allen in here as his love interest and I think she is one of the most underrated actresses of the 1980s. We got her in three classic performances. We got her in this, we get her in Starman, and then we get her later in the decade in Scrooge. And I just always thought that anytime she was on screen, she's magnetic. You know, she's got those big eyes. And she does a great job acting. And in this movie, she does a great job acting against Harrison Ford. You know, she's tough. She owns this bar. You know, we always see her drinking. And man, she can hold her liquor. She can compete with the best of them. We see her competing with that beautiful lady the first time in that amazing bar scene, which is probably one of my favorite scenes in the film because we get that iconic silhouette of Indiana Jones with his shadow reflecting on the wall and I honestly I want that picture on my wall one day when I get enough money I'm going to get a huge picture of that and put it on my wall because that is one of the best images in film history and then later at the very end of the scene we get one of my favorite lines of the movie where Karen Allen has the, the it's the headpiece for like help us guide us to the ark but she is in possession of it because Indiana used to work for her father and you know they had it fallen out mainly because you know he was dating his young daughter at the time I don't know what the exact exact ages but that's the one little hiccup in this movie is like she was apparently about like 10 or 12 years younger than him maybe around the age of 15 or something like that so that's the one little weird thing in this movie about their relationship they don't really address it too much they kind of gloss past it and Karen Allen looks like she's about the same age as Indiana Jones so they could have cut that whole little bit out of there but it's not a big deal and anyway at the very end of the scene the snow's blowing around and she's like yeah I'll tell you what until I get back my five thousand dollars you're gonna get more than you bargained for I love that scene. It's one of the best in the movie, and it just really gets you going. Raiders of the Lost Ark just moves along at an incredible pace. You know, everything is slightly over-exaggerated again because we're going for that B-movie feel that George Lucas wanted to go for, and you bring in Steven Spielberg, who is the king of summer blockbusters, action-adventure films. You know, the next year, he would do E.T., which is arguably his best film, my personal favorite from him, and he just knows how to make these movies. You combine that with the incredible John Williams score. John Williams, I mean, 
I know he's considered the greatest score creator of all time, but that's still not enough for this guy. I think that there's got to be something higher than that than the greatest because no matter what score this guy is involved with, it, I mean, I, they're just all good. And back in the 70s and 80s, he was just making an, a fantastic 10 out of 10 score every single year between the Star Wars movies, this, then E.T. the next year. It's unbelievable what John Williams can do. And this is arguably his best score. You know, the Indiana Jones theme is one of the greatest themes of all time. I'm going after that truck. Oh. You can't do better than John Williams. And his score really does blend so well with this film. I don't think this film would work as well without John Williams' score. I think it's one of the things that drives this movie along and helps it feel so greatly paced. And this movie is paced just fantastically. You're never bored. We don't really get any doubt time in this movie, but you don't really need it because everything is just moving along so greatly. All the action sequences are perfect in this movie. Some of the best are obviously the one with the truck, and my personal favorite is the one with the helicopter where the guy ends up in the blade. And again, this movie is rated PG. We would talk, we'll talk more about the rating system once we get to Temple of Doom, but it's incredible that back in 1981, any seven, eight-year-old kid could walk into a theater and see Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I imagine they just had the time of their life because Raiders of the Lost Ark, to this very day, is still one of the greatest films ever made. Is it my personal favorite in the Indiana Jones franchise? We'll have to wait and see on that one because I'm going to rewatch all of these and I'm going to review each of them individually and each of their individual 4K Blu-rays. But any which way you can, please make sure you check out Raiders of the Lost Ark because I promise you, you will not regret it. Trust me. So a couple of years ago, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark was released on 4K Blu-ray in a nice big box set. And that's the box set that I got. I got the 4K Steelbook box set that came out at the time. And I gotta be honest, the packaging on this is not the greatest. If you guys can see this exterior box, it's got like this little bend. It came like this. It comes in this really cheap like looking exterior box. It's like a plastic. I've only had this for a couple years. You could see the wear and tear on it. It's just because Paramount went with one of the cheapest like exterior boxes. And that's the big thing with this entire set. So I'm going to pull out, if you guys look at all the steel books in here, it's nothing like what Warner Brothers did with the Batman set or more recently what Warner Brothers did with the Superman set. So we just get this, you go in there, you pull out Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I don't mind these steel books. They've actually, last year, they made new steel books, which is more in line with what people would expect with Indiana Jones. When I think Indiana Jones, I think orange and black. I never really think of white. But they were for these clean looking white steel books for all of them. And I like the steel books in general. They might not fit the art style of the films. But you get that nice individual disc design on the inside and you get some individual box art for each of them, which I really do appreciate. But they, I think, we got the packaging better last year when they re-released each of these individually in their own steelbooks and you didn't have to buy them on their own. And then actually this June, you could buy just these 4K Blu-rays, not in a steelbook, just in a regular slip cover package, I believe. I'm not actually, I'm not 100% sure if they're gonna have slip covers, but I assume more than likely that they will. But Paramount has just been double and tripping, triple dipping on these. And if you guys just saw, this is only one 4K disc. There are no Blu-rays. So if you're wondering about extras, yeah, they're non-existent. If you want to watch the trailers, the trailers are on that 4K Blu-ray. That's all the extras you are getting. They don't even do a pack in Blu-ray. Like I was complaining last week about the Superman 4Ks only having the extras that were previously released on the Blu-ray. At least they packed in the Blu-ray. Now they didn't even pack in the Blu-ray. So all the extras, there's none. And I'm a huge, huge indiana jones fan so if i want to watch any extras i got to go onto youtube and research it that way or you know i can watch a steven spielberg documentary but i would love some more modern look backs on these films maybe in a few years we'll get that but then it'll force me to rebuy these so it's very disappointing that paramount did this and this has been paramount's mo for the last few years where they are just releasing the 4ks on their own without blu-rays and charging the same exact price now this set that i have right now is going for 67 bucks and that's not the worst because there are four films in here the fourth film in this franchise we'll get to it when we get to it but it's just god awful so if you wanted to just cherry pick the movies you want and just buy them separate you can do that now which is always really cool but i'm very happy to have all four of these i just really wish they would have gave us more extras i'm a big extras guy i know matt's the opposite of that but i would have loved more extras it's very disappointing that they couldn't at least give us that pack in blu-ray i still would have complained because we wouldn't have got new extras but just giving us the 4k disc you're just getting the film and now that 4k the thing with paramount is 
They are very hit or miss, but when they're firing on all cylinders, they put out some of the best looking 4Ks you'll ever see. And Raiders of the Lost Ark, visually, it's a 10 out of 10. It's never looked better. I don't think it can possibly look better. The Dolby Vision on this is incredible. You get Dolby Vision and you get HDR10, so you get both. They both are very comparable. I thought the Dolby Vision was a little bit better. There is almost no mistakes as far as the visuals go. You get a little bit of film grain. The only time I ever really noticed the grain too being like a negative was in the opening scene, which is one of the most iconic opening scenes in film history as we fade in from the Paramount logo on the mountain. And then, you know, you get the big boulder scene, but they're trying to hide Indiana Jones from us in the very early stages of this movie. And the deep black might look a little gray, and it only happens at the very beginning of this movie. You never have an issue throughout the rest of it. I mean, I'm telling you, flawless looking 4K visually, and we'll get to the rest when we get to them, but I mean, they all, they did a great job here, Paramount, on the visuals of this movie. You also get Adobe Atmos track, and that's a fantastic Adobe Atmos track. It's not the greatest one I've ever heard, but it's pretty high on the list, so if I'm giving a 10 to the visuals, I'd probably give it like a 9.5 to the audio, because it's a great Adobe Atmos track. It's going to give your system a workout, and I promise you that, and this is an action-adventure film, so... And it's a John Williams score, so you want a good Dolby Atmos track. You want a good audio track. And Paramount did give us a fantastic audio track. And I'm just so upset that we got such great visuals and audio here that we couldn't get any extras on here or get the previous Blu-ray because, yes, I don't use usually that second Blu-ray that comes in here, but for the extras, it's totally worth it. And there's plenty of people out there, I've been told here on this channel, who like that second Blu-ray. They get to, you know, maybe show it to their kids in a different bedroom that doesn't have a 4K Blu-ray player in there, or you can lend it out to people. So, again, Paramount, they, you know, they kind of cut a lot of corners here, but they definitely didn't when it comes to the visuals and audio. That is almost perfect, but I can't give this a perfect grade because the packaging and the extras are just so disappointing. So if I was going to give Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark its 4K Blu-ray a score out of 10, I have to still give it an 8 out of 10 because it's just so disappointing that we don't get any new extras. And the packaging that I have isn't the greatest. Now, like I said, these have all been re-released individually in their own brand new steelbooks that really fits more with the Indiana Jones art style. And now you'll be able to buy them without it being in a steelbook pretty soon in the middle of June, which is pretty cool. But... You know, for people like me who shelled out the money when this first came out, I don't remember what it was going for. For them to, like, just have the discs in there and just have that poor packaging, I'll admit I was very disappointed at the time, but those discs, but the quality of the disc itself does make up for it. These are the definitive editions of the film. The, it's just such a big jump from the previous releases. So if you're going to upgrade, it's definitely worth it. Just don't expect to get any extras and don't expect Paramount to pack in a second Blu-ray disc because they're just not going to do it. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me here on another episode of Let's Talk. Look out for the rest of these reviews coming up in the next week or two. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, like this video, and then after you're done doing all of that, guys, make sure you go out, maybe get yourself a nice nice hat like Indiana, a leather jacket and a whip, and then tell all your friends about us. We'll be seeing you around. <laughs>